everyone, welcome back to the channel. Artisan Pirate here, and welcome back to the train room. Now, it has been several months since we last checked into the train room. I believe the last time we were here on camera in the train room, we were reviewing the Chessie System Diesel and Caboose I had picked up at a thrift store for around 10 to 12 bucks, and we let it run around on the current layout then. But in this video, I'm happy to announce that I have my permanent train table set up. Keep in mind, everything is HO scale. That old table I had was wasn't even three foot wide and it was about six foot long and I had a loop just a basic oval of fast track on it and then I had screwed down some atlas track I had got at a train show so I had two little ovals going around and I had 3d printed buildings and everything and I would maxed out the room but I'm happy to announce the new train table is here it's bigger it's taller there's room to grow on it so I can start 3d printing more buildings and houses and everything because the layout is lacking houses so I do need places for the people in the town to live and everything but I went to the local builder center and picked up one half inch sheet of plywood and seven two by fours and a box of screws and I used everything but one solid two by four is out in the workshop and I'm surprised that the cost was less than $65. I was blown away by that when I went to check out and I'm just happy to have this. Now keep in mind the construction on this table is very bare bones. There's simple butt joints and screws. There's no glue or anything like that in it. That is because if I ever want to expand it or ever have a need to take it down completely, I can just unscrew everything, you know, put little marks where everything would go back together and take it down and put it together somewhere else if that would ever be the case or anything. But I'm happy to have this and I'm happy to show it off. I still have two basic ovals because that's what I like. I would like a third line, but I will discuss that when we're showing off the layout. But without further ado, I'm going to take the camera off the tripod and show you the train table and what is coming next for the train room. Now keep in mind, I'm going to be filming it free-handed, so it might be a little shaky, but I am going to hold the camera as steady as I can. So let me get the camera off the tripod, and we'll see the new train table. And here we have my permanent HO scale train table in the train room. You can see it is of a nice size. It is four foot wide by seven and a half foot long. Now I did want to do a four foot by eight foot table but I did cut six inches off just to make sure I had enough room to get all the way around the train table to work on the trains and do the layout and everything and you can see I have two loops of fast track one of them is the black fast track that I had on the old table which was a train table I had won from a train show and I took the O scale stuff off and packed it away and just put all HO scale stuff on it and then a gray loop here which I found that I didn't even know I had a complete circuit of but that is in the center there and it has room to expand and everything but as you can tell the train table is very tall it is three foot five inches tall and that's just custom to me because I'm six foot two inches tall and I didn't want to be hunched over working on the models or cleaning stuff so this is perfect for my height and it also allows for ample storage underneath I think there is 12 of the storage totes under there and two of those totes have stuff for trains there's a tote full of HO scale stuff and accessories and there's one full of O scale stuff because you guys do know I have a few HO scale trains and I'd love to have two train tables, one HO scale and one O scale, but this is what we have now. And the rest of the totes are just full of ceramic and woodworking inventory, and they're all labeled this like spring, summer, fall, and of course all the Christmas stuff is where we're vendors at. But closer inspection here, you can see that I used, again, the simple method of construction here to assemble everything, just basic butt joints and just screwed into the 2x4s. I ripped the 2x4s down into 2x2s, and on the router table, I rounded everything off here to make it softer to the touch, you know, and just more appealing to the eye. And then I went over it with the sander and everything. And you can see there is the half inch plywood I screwed down. And this table is very sturdy. It does not shake around or move. The old table was very wobbly because it was that board of OSB board with the carpet on it on top of basically essentially a card table. So if you just walked heavy in the room or you know made a sudden movement and you bumped your hip against the table stuff would knock over the trees and everything but the green stuff here we picked up at the local craft store and it was marked on the tube twenty dollars but when we checked out it was only 12.99 so got this very inexpensive and as i said 
with cutting off that six inches there is still more excess on both ends of it as well as here on the side and keep in mind I am going to get a curtain to go all the way around to hide the clutter and everything but we will look at what I have so far here we have what I do have as I call it the little village here and I do need more HO scale houses I was just out of room on that old table that's why I had quit um, printing and documenting HO scale buildings and this is one of the hardest things I ever printed out and painted to go with the church thing here I thought it was appropriate and I do have some beehives back here in the corner that's what that little light green roof is my grandfather used to have some beehives out at our old church and it was just a little sentimental thing to him and here is just the two houses I currently have but I am going to 3d print and make more now that I have room for it to grow and everything here is the lumber yard I 3d printed and 90 percent of the buildings on this whole layout is 3d printed and the roof can come off to where you can see some exotic woods that I had out in the workshop that I ripped down there is a stack of pallets back there you guys know I've done all pallet wood walls here in the train room for a rustic vibe here is the large sawmill here and this is the largest building I have 3d printed and this was a mega project for me it took over a month to to 3d print everything and then I painted and assembled everything with super glue I've noticed on a lot of train layouts and displays that there is always one quote-unquote large building to where everybody on the layout works like the people that would be here like in the houses and everything so since I'm a woodworker I thought this was only appropriate and I'm so happy that the fast track here is not too tall to go under the elevators here and somewhere else on the layout the fast track also was low enough for me to keep that piece on there as well but really really neat this is one of my favorite buildings for the trains to go on and of course the layout has Hot Wheels cars peppered around it because I love collecting Hot Wheels cars here in the corner I have a castle and this if anybody was ever curious is just an incense burner you can see there where you can put the incense cones in it and smoke will drift out of the windows and the turrets and all like a wizard's in there brewing his potions and then the Jurassic Park thing I 3d printed and I want to paint this castle up to make it look nice and rustic and everything and in this corner I would like to ultimately build maybe a mountain and have the two train lines go through it and come out I love seeing a train go in a tunnel and come out somewhere else and then maybe have the castle at the very top and maybe the Jurassic Park gate at the base or foot of the mountain but over here we have Lowe's home improvement I got this at a consignment shop I think for 15 20 bucks I believe here is the crossing and I love how when the train goes over it it goes down I think this is a Bachman model not quite sure 100% here we have Midway Variety Store. This is actually a variety store in my town of Bronton and it is one of the final mom and pop stores so it had to be represented as well as the local movie theater and I love how close this one looks to the real one and it's got lights in it. I was not able to plug it up on the old train table but now I have it wired. We will continue going around and as you can see I can easily walk around this train table and the Christmas tree over there is going to time stamp everything for the Christmas season. We are right at Thanksgiving here but it's got all of my train and Lionel ornaments as well as some sentimental ornaments that my grandparents made on there so it's nice and the windows open at night and you can see the lights twinkling and everything and then here under the window is some parts bin. A friend actually gave me these, a family friend, and these are full of just train parts and accessories, and I have no clue what is in these. I haven't had time to catalog them. There you see some trucks and everything. There's another box of train stuff as well. It's just all over the room. And then we have here the brewery and the station, and this is the classic Sunnyvale station and I need to get good with soldering because the wires are pulled out of this on one side and I'd like to reconnect those to where it can be wired to the layout and the lights and that would grow as well but here is my control panel where everything is hooked up again it's just two basic loops I um, with what I want and envision I love building the town now of course I love trains but I like building the trains and the models and everything and coming up with stories for everything like where the people work like at the lumber yard at the church and everything so we're going to turn them on and let them do one full lap here so I'm not a big fan of like rail yards or anything on layouts 
of course this is just a place for me to relax and I like just having the room to where I can relax and just enjoy the model trains and everything and we'll see a little steam engine there this was the first model I bought when I got back into trains you see the crossing working there and then we have the local boys and girls club you guys know I used to work with you so that had to be represented and here is the other little structure here that I'm happy that the fast track works with. I only had it going through the Atlas track last time, but you can see how the train easily has clearance, and all this is 3D printed as well. And I hope you guys can hear me talking over the trains. And here we have our switch tower here, and I love how the steps came out being 3D printed, as well as Skids 2 Restaurant with my favorite Hot Wheels car, Twin Mill, parked here. And Skids 2 is my favorite locally owned family restaurant. We go to it all the time. But this is pretty much it right now. I will show you guys a couple other things. Here is the cabinet with all of my childhood train stuff as well as my Thomas stuff. And there is my O-scale trains I was talking about. Thomas is sitting on the mantelpiece. I've got him out just to have him out for nostalgia and everything. And here is my one-piece model ships that I constructed. I'm a huge fan of the anime One Piece and I want to get all the ships in the fleet. But we will go on and turn these trains off. And we will get to where we wrap up everything. And again, you can see I have easily walked all the way around this train table and the top of the table comes right up to my hips so I'm not hunched over anything. Here we have the Grinch train at the base of the Christmas tree. We reviewed it in a previous video. It's battery operated from Walmart. And there's a nostalgia old school Dickens village right there. As well as the classic Lionel train ornaments and everything. And over here in this corner is my little table where I assemble the models as well as maintain and clean the trains. I've already got another HO scale house printed. As I said, I need more of those. So I'm happy to have the music going or the little TV in here on while the trains are clickety-clacking down the track. So really, really cool. And this is the permanent train table in my model train room. Let me get the camera back on the tripod and we will close the video. And that is my permanent HO scale train table here in the train room. I'm so excited for the journey ahead now that it has the potential to grow and evolve beyond what I had maxed out before on that simple, not even three foot by six foot table that had just become totally cluttered. Now everything is spread out and I have room to grow the layout and design everything. And I want to thank you all for continuing to ask about the model train room and the trains in general. Even on my Monday series woodworking videos, people would comment, say, hey, great project but when are we going to get back in the train room? It's such a relaxing vibe and we just enjoy you talking about it and showing off what you are creating and imagining in there. So I thank you all for continuing to ask about that. Again, I truly, truly, truly appreciate it and you have no idea what it means to me. Now that I have the permanent train table, everything can now kick into overdrive again with that smaller table that I had maxed out and it just had some basic stuff on it. The creative juices had stopped flowing after I'd maxed everything out and I'd stopped 3D printing the HO scale buildings and structures and all for it. And, you know, I'm now happy to announce that the creative juices are in overdrive to where I can make and create more. Again, you guys seen the little house I have already 3D printed and I've already got more loaded onto the 3D printer to where I can make more. I said in the video when we were panning around everything in here that I'm not a fan of rail yards and that's just because with the size of this I don't think one would fit on here. I'm not a fan of a lot of switches and everything. I just have the basic loops here and I would like to add a third one if possible and maybe not a full circuit but maybe Maybe a trolley line down the center like Main Street USA, you know, like where it goes, bumps one end, goes back, bumps the other, and it traverses like that. Maybe as transportation for the town to take people from the, the little city area I've got or the few houses I've got to where they work at the lumber yard and everything. So maybe, you know, that's something in the works. Again, there's a lot of creativity that can happen here. And again, with this being my first permanent train table that I now have total freedom to create on. I won't have no elevations or grades or anything. I do want to put a mountain in that corner and hopefully I can do that and that might be something I take you all 
on the journey for, you know, creating that. But I thank you guys again so much for continuing to ask about this. This is childhood wish fulfillment for me because back when I was a kid and an early teen and I would lay in the floor of my mom's living room or lay in the floor of my grandparents' living room and just have the snap track, the fast track that I have here going in a little circuit and I'd look at little railroad magazines my parents and grandparents had got from me. I would read articles while my little trains were going around and people would say, kind of bragging like, hey, we've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on our train room or train table with the wire and the light and you know making it out of nice hardwoods and everything and I thought in my mind back then I would never be able to do that but with everything here costing less than $65 again it was made out of number two spruce wood and then that was the two by fours a scrap piece of pine for the controllers to sit on that I had in the workshop and then a full sheet of plywood and again the green stuff was only like $12.99 so I think total cost for this whole table that you've seen here, not including the trains or the buildings, was right at $70, $75 once you add everything up totally, as well as the screws and everything. But anyway, I have enjoyed this. We will be back more next year into the train room, but I thank you guys again for sticking along and continuing to ask about it, and I hope you guys have liked this long overdue update. If you're new here, please subscribe to the channel and also follow me across all my social medias under the Artisan Pirate name. As always, links to contact me as well as to all my social medias that I'm connected to will always be linked down in the description box below these videos. That's about all for this one. And remember, guys, if I can make it or do it, so can you. I'm the Artisan Pirate. Take care, and I'll see you guys real soon.